Welcome back everyone. My name is Dr. David Amron. This is Lippy Logic at the Lippy Lounge. Today's segment is going to look at prevention of lipedema. Hugely important topic. We all want to prevent things, right? It's very important to prevent. Not only is we're going to talk about early on but even after surgery. So lipedema presents at a very young age, presents around puberty. And this is again why I've said many times we've got to be training other physicians, pediatricians, OBGYNs, diagnose it early, start on prevention right away, slow the progression of it, because it's very difficult to reverse it and set it back in its course once it's developed. Once there's fat in that layer, and certainly when fibrosis begins to develop, you really can't just set it back in its course with things. So you want to do everything to prevent with lipedema. And prevention really, really falls around three areas. Number one is nutrition. So we're going to talk a lot about nutrition and other lifestyle things later on in other segments. But lifestyle is an important thing with lipedema. Adopting a lipedema-centric lifestyle. Nutrition is the first important area. And many patients say, oh, you know, I've been dieting um, or I eat a so-called healthy diet. But a healthy diet or dieting does not always equate with what is strategically right for lipedema. You can be on a healthy diet and be eating the wrong things that can worsen lipedema. So you need to get knowledgeable about what it is you can eat for lipedema. Um, we're gonna have uh, a, a guest person talking more details about that, but generally your diet needs to be respectful of lipedema, revolving around ketogenic diets, RAD diets, no Karen Herbs loves a RAD diet. Generally avoiding gluten, being careful with dairy products, uh, sugars certainly, um, because nutrition is important. And, and what goes on um, when you eat the wrong things, not only is it um, not anti-inflammatory, increasing inflammation, but you're increasing the permeability across the lymphatic membranes. You are creating more swelling. We now understand that lipedema is not only just a fat disorder, as we've talked about, but a movement of fluid. So certain food items are gonna increase that movement of fluid out and, and worsen the lipedema. So nutrition is the number one area that is hugely important. And again, like I said, it's not only just before surgery to slow the progression, it's even after surgery too. You know, I'll do the surgery, I'll, it'll be a life-changing thing, like I, like I say. I'll set it back virtually completely to its inception with things. It's very rare for it to come back, if ever, but a person still needs to be respectful of dietary strategies for lipedema. The second important area is compression, paying attention to compression. And again, this begins early on. If, if girls in their teenage years are beginning to get swelling besides looking after their diet for lipedema, wear compression therapy, wear compression garments. Um, it's gonna slow the progression of it. Possibly do compression, other compression therapy, MLD therapy, if it gets more advanced compression pumps. So compression is a very important part of slowing the progression for lipedema. Um, when I talk about swelling after surgery, and we're gonna get into this in other segments, um, people ask, well, can the swelling come back? And let me give you my experience about this. I'm a person who loves to categorize things into very understandable areas for myself in terms of what I see, how I do things, but also for the patient too. Swelling falls in three areas after surgery. Category one, patients don't really have any swelling anymore. They're just not swelling after the surgery. If they're not swelling long-term we're talking about, it isn't as impaired to be paying attention to compression therapy or compression garments. Category two, they will still have some swelling at certain times. If that's going on, they still need to pay attention to compression therapy or compression garments, especially at certain times when they travel, when it's hot out, possibly when it's the exercise. Those are the two main categories. Category three is a less common category that in my experience occurs in less than 1% of patients where they still have progressive swelling. And for those patients, it's important to continue with rigorous compression garments, compression therapy. So the second important category is swelling for prevention. The third category is reducing any hormonal fluctuations. As we know with lipedema, it tends to to spike with the different hormonal changes due to estrogen, puberty, pregnancy, menopause, OBGYN surgery, or other hormonal fluctuations. So as much as possible, reduce the hormonal fluctuations um, to prevent lipedema. 
So hopefully that was, that was insightful. Again, I know I talked generally about these different areas. We're going to go into more detail in other segments. I'm Dr. Dave Amron of Lippy Logic at the Lippy Lounge. Thank you for tuning in and get involved with lipedema. Mm -hmm.